Hi guys, welcome to Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're not taking a look at a bayonet, we're taking a look at a German army officer's dagger from the Second World War. So these were manufactured by uh, numerous manufacturers in uh, Germany, mostly out of Solingen, uh, which is the uh, town in Germany probably most famous for manufacturing um, knives and uh, weapons going back to medieval times. So there were a number of manufacturers that made these. I don't have a uh, complete list of all of them, but the ones I've been able to track down so far is uh, e &F Horstar, Carl Eckhorn, uh, WKC, Spitzer, uh, Weiserberg, and I think it's Robert Klaas. Now these were made commercially, so they weren't uh, bought through the uh, Wehrmacht or through the, uh, the German military or contracted in any way. Uh, an officer had to privately by his own dagger. So I'm under the belief that um, they do vary in uh, quality. So I've seen some with Damascus blades, but not very many. And I believe that that's um, an added feature that an officer would have to pay extra to get. Uh, also noted that by the end of the war, quality of these was down a little bit compared to the start. So there's a bit of variation as well as like different color grips and stuff. So they're all pretty different. So um, these were authorised for personnel to carry uh, in the Wehrmacht in 1935. And at the time, they were very, very well liked and uh, very well received. So taking a look at the construction of the blade, we have a very long slender blade, not sharp at all, bit of a point to it, no fuller. And this blade has a full tang, which goes all the way down to the pommel. Having a look at the cross guard here, we have the uh, Wehrmacht Open Winged Eagle clutching a wreathed swastika, and that's only on the one side. Moving down to the handle itself, it's made of a plastic, so these do come in a couple different colors. Uh, for the army, this is the, uh, the most common color, sort of this orangey uh, color. I've also seen them in white and different shades of orange, as well as like a dark, deep kind of red. We've got a little band at the top here with uh, oak leaves and acorns. That's going to be a common theme on this dagger. And moving down to the pommel, uh, we've got uh, vertical standing oak leaves and more acorns around the circumference. And nothing on the end. Having a look at the scabbard, we've got more of these uh, oak leaves and acorns. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. Some more acorns and oak leaves, and then we've got sort of pebbling down the surface of the whole scabbard on both sides. We've got these two rings here, so you can get a belt hanger for these. I don't have one for this one. I've got an example actually of a Luftwaffe belt hanger, so I'll pull that out quickly and give you a look. So that's roughly what this would have looked like. So this is obviously for a Luftwaffe dagger. Uh, I'll do a separate video on that one later. Okay, so jumping into the markings, we have the manufacturer's details on the Ricasso of the blade. Let's see if I can get this to focus. So this one is made by uh, ENF Horster in Solingen. On focus, and I don't have a year of manufacture anywhere on this blade that I've been able to find. There's no markings whatsoever on the scabbard, but I have found a few more markings on the internal of um, the bayonet, so it uh, comes apart really, really easily. The pommel screws off, just thread it on there, handle slides off. And off comes the cross guard too. So it's not the case with this example, but I have seen other examples with markings on, on the tang. So just under the blade here. Uh, I've seen some with manufacturer's details there and I've seen some with uh, stampings there. I've got a, uh, well the Luftwaffe one I just mentioned before has a cross on the tang, but there's nothing on this example. <laughs> Moving down to the cross guard, we do have 
some kind of marking just here. So we get that to focus. There we go. So just in here, next to my finger, focus again, please. There we go. I'm not sure if that's something to do with the manufacturing process or if that's an actual stamping or marking, but it looks very similar to the manufacturer's stamp on the blade, which I'll bring up again. So that central logo there, the H with the dagger going through the center. Then with this here, it's kind of like a box with a cross going through it, but that could be part of the manufacturing process, I don't know. Then we also have another one here on the inside of the pole. This one is clearly a H with a blade going through it, so that's definitely the manufacturer's marking on the pommel. There's no markings whatsoever on the handle. Now these handles, you do come across a couple of them that have a woven wire running in between the grooves. That's not the case with this one. I'm not sure if that's limited to uh, Luftwaffe or Navy, if it's service specific or if it's a uh, an added extra that you can get, I don't know. Now these were used exclusively for uh, ceremonial. They were um, dress, dress daggers. And uh, it's a very weak blade. I can't see it being used practically in any meaningful way. I mean, uh, Third Reich was a uh, horrible place. They did horrible, horrible things. And I wouldn't be surprised if some sadistic officer did use something like this in some horrible way. But I haven't read any accounts of it. Uh, I'm not usually a fan of the Nazi memorabilia, but um, I'm trying to be as comprehensive as I can and make videos on um, all the blades I come across. And when you're... Uh, researching historical blades, you're bound to come across a few swastikas, unfortunately. These are um, quite collectible and very, very expensive these days. Uh, there's a huge variation uh, in the manufacturing, how they're made. So you've got the different color handles, the different style cross guards, uh, different style blades being Damascus, as I said. There's so many different kinds and there's uh, some pretty serious collectors out there who probably know more than I'll ever be able to learn. That being said, though, if I've made any uh, huge errors today, guys, please feel free to let me know. And if I missed out anything uh, super interesting, chuck a comment down below. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching, guys.